All right, so our next uh, presentation is um, from Zakir Hussain uh, on Balti script and its revitalization efforts in Pakistan. So I think you should have um, rights to share your screen. Yes, I'm here. Okay, perfect. May I start? Please go ahead. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, looks good. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> greetings from Skardo, Baltistan, Pakistan at uh, 3 a.m. morning. Uh, good morning, good evening, Julie. Uh, so I'm speaking on Balti script and its revitalization efforts in Baltistan. The Balti Ege or Balti Rbijok. Uh, Balti uh, script is in fact, because first I would like to talk about language. Language is the principal means used by human beings to communicate with one, other, one another. And it is the best mirror of human mind. And when we say uh, any language, the whole cultural and particularly intangible cultural asset lies in language. And the sign of language does not differ from science of thought. Chomsky. Language does not only mediate uh, reality, it also has the ability to transform it. So with all these uh, significance, when we see uh, Balti language, Balti language, uh, according to Beckstrom and Radolf, belongs to the Western Tibetan branch of Tibetan language family, which is a part of larger tibeto burman language family. And it is situated in extreme western of China and the Tibetan uh, tibeto burman languages. And when we say particularly about Balti, uh, so it is a, an archaic dialect of Tibetan in West Tibet, a group with Ladakhi, Purigi, uh, Zangskari, and Laholi. And today, approximately 93% of the population consider Balti as their mother tongue in Baltistan. The language is there, but the script uh, is not, uh, was not there. It was almost at uh, uh, extinct uh, stage. It was almost endangered. This is the uh, Baltistan where we stay. Here is uh, Shigar. You can see Rondu, Skardu, Karmang, and Ganche. In these uh, areas, these uh, four districts, Ganche, Shigar, Skardu, Karmang, uh, Balti is native language. And from here to here, with very minimum variation, uh, Balti is spoken as uh, first language or mother tongue. And when we say in the larger picture, this is Baltistan, where Balti is the first or mother tongue, uh, tongue first language or mother tongue. Here is uh, China, uh, Aksai Chin, Ladakh, the Indian part, the Kashmir, uh, the Pakistani part, and uh, Indian part. And this is uh, Baltistan. And uh, Pakistani part of uh, Baltistan covers border with uh, China, Shaskam, uh, and the last village of Rondu. We already shared that uh, uh, around 93% of the uh, population use it as their mother tongue. This is the Tibetan Ege script. It is in use in Tibet and other parts, but in Baltistan, particularly after partition, 
this uh, language was almost uh, disappeared. This script was almost disappeared. And uh, during late 1990s, uh, there were only uh, below 20 uh, lit uh, this script literate people in Baltistan. It was lied in uh, books and uh, other uh, literature, and literature access was not there from uh, other neighboring parts to Baltistan. And this is a bit uh, brief history about this uh, Balti, what we uh, name as a gay or a gay script. When we uh, trace its uh, history, it goes back to the Zanzu dynasty. And then predates the uh, culture of Tibetan Buddhism. These are the uh, scripts we can see the uh, uh, Smarchen script of Zhangzhou dynasty. And uh, uh, Pengchen script, we can see the similarities from uh, here to here to here. And then we can see the same uh, from these lines to these lines, these lines, and then the most evolved uh, present Tibetan script in the first uh, uh, column where the uh, mostly used Yungdung uh, sign was dropped off almost after a period of time. And then the, this uh, first line script is now used in Tibet, in uh, Bhutan, uh, in uh, Ladakh and other parts. And it is uh, carved there in on rocks, you can say, uh, see Om Mani Padmeham, the largest script is written here at the Buddha rock, also known as Tonpa rock. Uh, this is in uh, old Tibetan script. And uh, recently, my university, our university of Baltistan has tried to transcribe it and translate it. So this is the history. And these are the uh, alphabets we use uh, with international phonetics. And uh, this script is remarkably similar to classical Tibetan script. And uh, there are, uh, it was reported in 1992, there are a handful of educated Balti speakers who are able to read and understand the classical literature in the Tibetan script. Similarly, Franke reports a first-hand history of Ladakh and Baltistan with translation of original Tibetan Ege script books and, chronicle, uh, and chronicles. In this book, the Kesar Saga and Tibetan cosmology and genealogy were beautifully described. The Balti script is still used in Skam, Tibet, Ladakh, and other uh, uh, Baltistan 500 years ago. But there was a, a very strange kind of interpretation and alienation from the Balti Ege script. After the religious conversion of Buddhist population of Baltistan to Islam, Arabic and Persian languages were introduced here. And the Tibetan script was gradually abandoned, considering it the symbol of Buddhism. Hussein Abadi reports this. And uh, there was an interesting uh, story that the Baltis, who were also known as Bodh or Bothis, hence their language was also known as Bodhskat. In normal speaking, the word Bodh resembles to that of the Buddh, Buddhism. Hence, several of the Muslim uh, preachers from outside of the Baltistan considered Bodhskat as if a sign of Buddhism and discouraged use of original Balti script again being taken as the major carrier of Buddhism faith, although that was not the case. And uh, even in my case, I have uh, interviewed few uh, elders, some of the uh, uh, literate people, even you can say uh, known as scholars, they were also of the view that this script 
can uh, be counter to religious faith. I said, this language and the script particularly has nothing to do with religion. This is both Scott, not Buddhist language. However, Bhutskat simply means Panthi language, not language of Buddhist or a religion. Both are Bhuti or Bhuti uh, were used for Balti ethnic group, not the Buddhist faith. Because even now there are several Balti uh, clans and uh, tribes known as Bhuti or Bhuti. However, it seems that the foreign or external preachers not literate in Balti language were somehow afraid of the code words used in Balti. It was not possible to ban the spoken language. However, they succeeded in endangering Balti script, calling it Botskat, in a sense, as if it was non-Islamic language. Language has nothing to do with the religion and uh, faith or practices, because uh, right now, uh, all the Balti people offer their prayers mostly uh, and offer their rituals in Balti language. So this I just shared that even now uh, this uh, perception is there that uh, particularly the religious circles say uh, they don't, uh, they are not motivated, you can say, uh, that not prefer to use this uh, but in early 20th century, there was a very good uh, kind of uh, revival efforts. Um, earlier, it was just uh, uh, people were using uh, the Urdufication, you can say Urdu, uh, Persio, uh, Persio Arabic script, and then Urdu script. Every, uh, all the Balti uh, literature were uh, written in that. And then few of the people tried to write it in uh, English, Roman as well. Uh, according to a report of UNESCO, half of the 6,700 languages spoken today were endangered, and Balti was out of 27 endangered languages spoken in Pakistan. And the uh, uh, script was almost at the verge of extinct in part of Pakistan. And now the revitalization efforts are here. Uh, before going to the revitalization efforts, uh, I will just like to uh, uh, share a few salient features that out of 30 basic alphabets, 17 alphabets are stand alone full words, even without any additional vowels, as all the letters have built in a vowel. When we say, uh, when we see in, uh, in case of English, only I is a full word letter. For example, uh, in uh, Balti, when we say there are many uh, words, if we add single vowel, uh, which is not a, a letter, it is a sign above or below, like uh, uh, in case of Arabic. Addition of single vowel makes another word. For example, the first alphabet ka means mouth. Ka, when we add uh, one a, it becomes no. And similarly, when we uh, um, add another uh, um, vowel, e, that means ki means dog, ko means he, k means capacity. And secondly, the Balti language has another interesting thing. Uh, it is the language of natural phonetics. The first weeping sound or voice of a child, a baby, is nga. Nga. And in Balti, Nga means I, me. Then the baby repeats, Onga, Onga, Onga. That means, Onga means milk in Balti. And then they turn, Ango, Ango, Ango. That means, Mami, Mami, Mami. And then Nga, to weep. So the Nga. Uh, basic uh, uh, alphabet is used in different ways, and that makes meaning. And when we combine all these uh, words, we can say, we can make a wonderful and meaningful relevant sentences from these words. For example, I weep for milk. 
Mami, meal please. Me, mami, attention, uh, seeking kind of uh, words. So I need milk, mami, milk me, etc. So all these, uh, all the uh, three sounds are meaningful words in Balti, and these are very much relevant to the natural phonetics, even without learning any language, even before uh, before language. Uh, then uh, in late 90s uh, and then early uh, 20s, the literate uh, youth who, who tried to explore all these scripts where you can say a beautifully uh, carved uh, boulder, Om Mane Padmehan, the Buddhist mantra. And then uh, uh, Baltis Kathkor was a school uh, they had started uh, certificate courses in Balti script. And this was Ochan Zakir. He was demonstrating uh, script, Balti script in uh, Silk Route 2013 at uh, Karakram International University, Gilgit. And these are the efforts of, uh, you can say, books and primers. This was published by um, a uh, few people uh, in Karachi. And then uh, this was the uh, primer, Balti Tibati Sikhye, Balti Ege. It was published by uh, Tibet Foundation and compiled by Hasnain Sering. Uh, yes, there were many, uh, several uh, typos and other uh, improvement areas but that was a very good initiative. And then this uh, primer has been uh, published in 2017. And this is in trilingual, first colorful. You can say here, see here, this is a ka kushu. And we have a ka kar. And uh, the meaning is here. And uh, both in English and Urdu uh, pronunciations are written. And similarly, uh, this has been uh, popular enough. And after this publication of this primer, and there was a training as well. Right now, uh, yes, these were the these were other schools. Uh, Again, school by Nisar Kasman. Baltis Kathkor by Raza Ghalib and Hamid. And there were classes in private schools by Manzoor, Shah, and others. And right now you can see uh, many uh, social media accounts in uh, Baltis script again. And now the number of again literate are in uh, hundreds and probably uh, would go in uh, rock in thousands uh, within the uh, city of Skardu, the central headquarters city of Baltistan. So these are the recommendations. Uh, one more thing I would like to have just skip uh, perhaps here. The University of Baltistan has started uh, again revitalization efforts. And for the very first time, it's uh, transcripts and degrees have Balti script again. Uh, do right now only the name of university, uh, Baltistan University in again, uh, both on script, uh, transcript, uh, you can say mark sheet and the degree. So these are the efforts. And uh, recently, the university has announced uh, formal classes, non-credit course uh, at uh, undergrad level, uh, BS uh, classes uh, in the university. So these are the developments uh, in revitalizations. So here are a few recommendations that uh, Balti and other local languages may be preserved and promoted in their originality through school curriculum and revitalization initiatives. Uh, that was uh, localization of uh, uh, curriculum in the 18th Amendment of uh, Constitution. And the original script of any language can only be the true carrier and its, uh, of its uh, heritage and linguistic characteristics. Therefore, where the original script exists, it may be revitalized. Here are two universities, uh, Karakram International University, KIU, and University of Baltistan. 
and both these universities uh, should play their uh, guiding and facilitating roles because uh, they may engage uh, UNESCO and other international bodies for facilitation of such uh, revitalization initiatives. And right now, as uh, the keyboard exists and uh, other uh, digital technologies and media communication is very easy, so concerted efforts can uh, revitalize this uh, endangered uh, script, particularly in the case of Pakistan. As uh, the script is uh, uh, the mother tongue, so uh, it's very easy to learn. Uh, in uh, my own case, I have uh, started teaching uh, this uh, script to my children, and they were able to learn this script uh, uh, within uh, a month, within uh, 10 days even. And uh, my son was uh, demonstrating this, uh, that, uh, 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 writing uh, in the Silk Route. And now, uh, as I shared earlier, uh, transcript and degrees have been, uh, have uh, the Aegis script. And uh, University of Pakistan's Academic Council has approved it as a regular formal class for the very first time, though there were uh, several uh, oppositions and um, uh, apprehensions of few people as well in the name of you can say uh, national integrity or uh, religious faith something like that and then uh, Dr. Zakir has been designated as focal person uh, for Balti Age script and uh, formal classes are about to open uh, by uh, mid of this month so that's all thank you and Yatish uh, I am without electricity here. You will be amazed to know. Yeah, uh, this is just a small light. I have kept it. <laughs> so we are living in uh, this part of the world. Any question? Thank you. Thank you. Great presentation. Um, I did have one question. So you mentioned that I did see that there are social media accounts and everything with um, the Agay script now, is that correct? You said? So it's being used like on social media and on the, on the internet. So I guess that that means that it had it is all the symbols in the orthography are in Unicode so that people can use them anywhere on like Facebook, you know, wherever yes. other emails. Okay. Yes. And all these are just uh, very recent uh, developments let uh, uh, early 20s you can say okay because i know you mentioned it was very similar early this century, yeah so sure if it was if they could just use you know the tibetan characters already in unicode or if it had to be added yes and it does seem oh sorry go ahead somebody else had a question jesse has a question yes welcome Hi, yeah, thank you very much. It was a very uh, interesting discussion and um, really nice to hear how um, how this orthography is being used firsthand and uh, how it's being developed. So uh, really fascinating information. My, my question to you actually has to do with if you've had much resistance in um, your spelling, the decisions on spelling rules or how that's come about. I know that Tibetan has very strict, um, you know, decisions. Like for example, I, I notice here, your your last uh, slide here. It says Yadi, uh, Sha, and then there's the Za after Sha, um, and I, I pretty much I, I'm pretty sure that would probably break a spelling rule. Um, and so I'm just wondering how. Yes, yes, yes. In, yes. in I mean, in the uh, you know, in Ike that would uh, break a spelling rule. So I guess I'm just curious as to, um, yeah, if there is resistance from uh, certain people about how things are spelled and how okay. you go about uh, making those decisions. Okay, thank you. Uh, here are two kinds of resistance. First was uh, just uh, not to use a gay uh, orthography at all. Considering it uh, uh, non, uh, not part of our uh, religious and national, uh, not in line with national and uh, religious 
things. A uh, second, yes, a uh, second resistance was because uh, right now the revitalization efforts are as spoken. Uh, we write, uh, as you see here, yeah, T shas de ju. So uh, this is not in line with the Tibetan one. So there is a school of thought who say, okay, this uh, spelling has to be in line with Tibet. And uh, what is our uh, uh, point for you is that we are also the uh, linguists because this is our language. It has to be made easy. To make it easy, if we write it, uh, if we start in writing it as we speak, then people will get know about the uh, orthography, and about the letters, about the phonetics. And then later on, you can add those, uh, for example, uh, the prefix or the, the suffix kind of thing, which is not uh, spoken, uh, that's possible. So we can go uh, at a later stage to the Tibetan one, but not in the primary stage. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Is there anyone else? Oh, let me see. Let's somebody said something in the chat. Um, oh no, sorry, that was from a previous previous question. It does seem um, this is definitely not the first time I've heard of resistance to an orthography due to some sort of religious um, or socio political situation. I'm curious if anybody else. Just I'm curious in the group if anybody else has run into this with the languages that they are actively working on, if there's resistance to orthography due to some sort of religious or political factors. It seems to be a common theme. Yeah, hi, this is Shobhana. So um, definitely in, in Manipur, uh, there was a kind of a resistance towards using the Bengali script after um, it had been used for several hundred years. And so there was a sort of return to a pre-Bengali script, um, and which is very interesting that in social media, though people tend to still be using, uh, they, use <laughs> they use Roman alphabet with, and there are no standards right now for that. So uh, even though there is Unicode, so it's interesting that for in the Balti case, in social media, people are, are adopting that. I'm wondering if there's any, use of you know other scripts in social media as well like whatsapp in whatsapp do how do people write in whatsapp or yeah uh, yes uh, similar, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, similar cases are here uh, in other uh, local languages uh, of gilgit uh, shina brusheski suwahi and kwar these four languages are spoken uh, in our neighbor. Uh, and they are also facing the same problem, uh, the resistance. And uh, some of them use uh, Urdu script. Some of them use uh, 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 English Roman. And they have tried to uh, redesign uh, with the Balti, with the Urdu script, putting uh, four dots above or below or something like that just uh, adding their own innovations in Urdu. So that is their effort, but that is not yet uh, successful because of the similar reasons. I see, yeah, thank you. See. Yeah, Shirobini, you mentioned WhatsApp, and I always, um, I know that they, they have apps now for smartphones and stuff, you know, for cell phones, but I'm just always curious. It seems like if, you know, the script isn't, easily accessible on some sort of app that you can type it. It's going to be, you know, might, might use it on computers, but not on a phone, you know, with WhatsApp or something. Can I just say something very briefly about that? Yeah. Um, I've, I've been investigating this issue um, relating to the implementation of Unicode scripts quite carefully in recent times with the aid of some um, people who have a lot of expertise about this. And every single application on every single different device works differently as regard to Unicode. So I know of some Unicode scripts which will work partially on some applications on some devices and differently on other applications on other devices. So 
First, you have to get something accepted in Unicode, then you have to make the font, then you have to make the keyboards, and then the software engineers have to make those work on every device and through every app. So that's why sometimes things work in some places and not in other places. And I think we probably require somewhere between 10 years or more to get all that working provided that no further alterations are made to any scripts, which will then have to be to go through the same process. So if you add a letter to a Unicode script, you then have to get the new font, get the new keyboard, make it work on all the different applications. Oh my gosh, which also sort of, you know, that sort of speaks to how expensive it can be for a community to try and get their orthography digitized. I mean, if they're not developers, they're not going to have the funds necessarily to pay to do all that development work. So right. definitely a huge undertaking. Yeah. Yeah, actually... uh, we have uh, our keyboards in Tibet and PRC and Zdonka both, but a uh, few uh, words uh, such as Ka, uh, not Ka, Ka, Qaidazm. So their Ka was uh, the the reward form of ka, uh, and uh, this is not in keyboard. This is in uh, uh, Unicode, but it is not part of uh, keyboard. So we are uh, making uh, struggles to make it from somewhere. Yeah, you're too, Stefan. Thank you. Yeah, look, talk, talk to me later about that because I might be able to um, help find some people who can help you to make those keyboards. The making of the keyboards is probably the, one of the least difficult parts of that process. Yes, so, it, it is. Because you know, uh, uh, software engineers uh, do it. Thank you.